Hey everybody, welcome back to Tech Odyssey. So I'm here today with the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5G, which I finally got a case on. And this is my one year reflection on this device. I don't wanna say one year review because, I mean, if y'all followed my videos for the last year, you knew that I used to have a Mystic Gray and now I've got this Mystic Bronze guy, Mystic Bronze. So I had it like 10 months. I got mine on launch day. The problem being is that, well, the last one kind of messed up and I had to send it in for repairs and then it disappeared in the hands of Samsung. And we'll talk about that in this video, but I used the Z Flip 5G. I've told everybody this is my most favorite phone of this last year and I like it. I like it a lot. There are some pros, there are some cons, there are some trade-offs, there are some great benefits that you get to having it. It costs a lot of money, but it's a really cool phone. And yeah, I want to talk about it because it's been out for a year. And of course, 2020 has gone by like, it's like, it's gone 2021 now, halfway through it. And yeah, we're going to talk about it because it's very important now since the new Z Flip 3 is right on the horizon a couple days from now, if you're watching this, you know, today when it comes out on the, on the 9th of August. So we're going to dive in, take a look at it, my thoughts and impressions on it after it being out for a year and all that jazz. And before we get into that though, I do want to say if this is your first time stopping by the channel, thank you for being here. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. Now let's talk about the Z Flip 5G. So there's probably three reasons you're watching this video. One, because you want the Z Flip 5G and you don't want to spend all the money on the new one and you're hoping to catch a good sale. Two, you're interested in getting the Z Flip 3, but you kind of want to get some information on the Z Flip 5G and see how it's held up over the last year before you consider buying the new one. And three, you're probably just a general tech enthusiast or you'd like to watch my videos and hopefully this will be entertaining for you and hopefully it will be informative and educational for all three groups of people. This one right here. The Z Flip 5G. I like it a lot. There are pros and cons with this device. This isn't one of those ones where it's like, hey, this is the iPhone 12 Pro Max, or hey, this is the Z Fold 2, or hey, this is the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. It has all the bells and whistles. It has the best cameras, the best battery life. The, this, cam, th this phone basically has mostly not the best of anything. <laughs> it has very good in most categories to good. And most importantly, the cameras. The cameras on here are okay. You can take decent pictures, especially if you've got good lighting. They've got two 12 megapixel cameras on the outside, a wide angle and a regular primary camera. And then on the inside, you've got a 10 megapixel selfie camera. They are adequate, they are okay. It's not like the S21 Ultra that has phenomenal cameras. It's not like the iPhone 12 Pro Max that has phenomenal cameras. Can you shoot 4K video 30 frames per second on the front and the back? Yes. Can you do slow-mo video? Yes. Can you do 4K 60 with the primary camera? Yes. Can you take portrait mode shots? Yes, on the front and the back. And you can do portrait video, which is really cool. So if you want a okay camera that does a lot of things, then you're gonna be perfectly fine. Just don't, don't go into the thinking you're gonna be shooting like super high quality video and picture. You're not going to, and you'll be disappointed. If you just wanna take I mean, good quality photos and share them on your Instagram and your Twitter and have them for your personal reference, share with people, it's gonna do all that. You'll likely be happy with it. When it comes to the battery life, that's probably disappointment area number one with this phone. It has a 3300 milliamp battery. Things have changed. Like the game has changed since this, since this phone came out. When we had One UI, what, 2.1 when this first came out, it was better. Like the battery life was better. One UI 3.1 has destroyed batteries on the Ultra, on the Note, on the Flip. Like anything I put One UI 3.1 on, it's like, that meme when you talk about like the Lion King, you see Mufasa and you see Simba and he says that that area over there, like everything the light touches is yours. But what about the dark area over there? We don't ever go there, Simba. That's one UI 3.1 in battery life. It has destroyed battery life on so many Samsung phones, all the ones that I have. My battery life in my Fold 2 has got worse. My battery life on my Ultra has got worse. My battery life on my Z Flip 5G has gotten worse. That's just my experience. Maybe your experience has been better. That has been mine. 3300 milliamp battery. Just so you folks know, this has a Snapdragon 865 Plus in it as the system on a chip, the processor. Very, very powerful. Last year's flagship chip. When I first got this phone, I was getting about four and a half hours of screen on time on a good day. On a bad day, eh, maybe about four hours. Like 
by the time I got to about 10 to 15 percent battery. I did this the other day at 29 percent battery left. I had two hours and 45 minutes of screen on time. This sucker was almost dead by four o'clock in the afternoon, and it wasn't even a heavy day of usage. <laughs> so I had thought, and I told somebody, because I've got my Motorola Razor 5G right here, which I like a lot, 2800 milliamp battery, and I had told people that I expected it to have better battery life, but then I was like, you know what, it's not getting that great battery life, so going off of my memory from my Z Flip 5G, I was like, well, I used to get about four and a half on that, and I'm getting about three and a half on this, three hours and 45 minutes, so apparently the Z Flip 5G is better, and now that I'm using this since I've got my second one with the newer UI update, my Motorola Razor is actually getting better battery life. And so battery life on here is not phenomenal. It, if you're a, an average normal person that doesn't use your phone for six hours of screen on time in one day in one charge, you're probably going to be okay. If you just use your phone casually like most normal people do and you're not a phone addict like me, you might be okay. It'll probably get you from sun up in the morning till sundown. And I think that's okay. I mean, for what you're getting out of this phone, sun up to sundown, is probably going to be okay for most people. If you need a phone that goes from 6 a.m. until 10 p.m. on one charge, if you're actually using it, this is not it. This is not, no, it's not at all. Speakers. The speaker on here is actually pretty good. I wish it had two speakers, but then there's the problem we're talking about, battery life. It just ain't good. So if you add other things on here like, oh, a second speaker to power from the same battery, you're gonna decrease your battery life. The one that's on here is adequate, and then what's nice is whenever you're like listening to stuff and you close it, just having the one on here, it works very good. So they have compensated and put a really good single speaker on here. I don't generally have complaints about the sound, so I don't want it to sound that way. It does have good sound. It doesn't have a headphone jack if you care about that. I don't particularly. It does have the folding display. Now the folding display on here I find is largely okay. I didn't really even have problems with it even when mine was like, eight and a half, nine months old before I sent it off to get repaired. What happened to mine, there was actually a problem underneath the screen itself here at the hinge, and it was making this weird popping noise. And I sent it in to Samsung. They're like, we don't know what's wrong with it, and they sent it back. And I'm like, how could you not figure out what's wrong with it? I told you. So then I recorded a video of it. I posted it online. I sent them the YouTube link. I wrote out exactly what was happening on a piece of paper, told them over the phone again, sent it in, the next day they say they're sending it back because they can't figure out what's wrong with it. I'm like, I sent you a video link. Like, just click it. It, it tells you what's wrong. They didn't do it, apparently. And then they, th they said they were sending it back. I waited three weeks. I didn't get any update. My phone didn't show up. No nothing. I probably should have called before then, but I was like, whatever. I got, more, I got a lot of things going on right now. Then I finally call, and they're like, uh, yeah, we, uh, we're just going to send you a replacement. I'm like, okay, call me to get a new one. I love the phone. Thanks. Send me a replacement. Oh, like another seven to 10 days go by, they call me and say, hey, so we don't have any replacements to give you, so we're just gonna mail you a check. <laughs> How's that sound? So they sent me a check for $1,299, which is now the MSRP of the phone. So I didn't get the $1,449 plus tax back, and it really irked me because they weren't sending me $1,299 plus tax. They were just sending me $1,299, so they still ripped me off. I was still not happy about that, but whatever. So I cashed the check. I didn't buy another one because I'm like, well, the new Z Flip 3 is coming out soon, and then I got the Razer 5G, and then I'm like, it's getting really close. Like, I really want to compare both of them. I want to make content for you guys, so I I bought another one. I got this one for like 700 something brand new sealed in the box on team, uh, on eBay, and I felt pretty, pretty good about that because I'm going to trade this in. Probably get about $700, $800 trade-in value when I get the Z Flip 3. I'll be able to make my coverage for the new one. Life will be good. It'll basically pay for itself and go towards the Z Flip 3 I was going to buy anyway. So no harm, no foul. As far as durability, I think it's a very durable phone. Put a case on it. This one right here, and I'm so glad I did. I got this new, well, new. I got a Rinky Slim case and put it on here. And this is the same thing I had on my previous Z Flip 5G. Has saved my butt so many times. I've dropped this sucker like bad. I dropped it and it fell off my lap. It hit the metal pole on my desk. I dropped it in between my bed. It hit the metal bed frame. Had I not had this case on it, this phone would be messed up. So spend the $20, get this case. It won't scratch it up. It's very, very good. And it's held up for a long time. This is just my second one because I got a new phone. Easy to take on and off if you don't use the little strip things that like stick it to it. I can't really do that because I'm always like constantly doing stuff with this phone for review purposes. So 
it is held up well. Put a case on it, even without putting a case on it, it's held up well. You get this nice frosted matte mystic bronze on here. It looks great, it feels good, it doesn't really show fingerprints. And then you get the glossy finish on the back there. There's no water rating, there's no impact resistant, mill standard drop protection rating, none of that jazz. You get this secondary screen on the outside that is just a major cop out. You can use it actually as a viewfinder, which is crazy. You can use it, if you, if you can see it, you can take pictures with the primary and the wide angle camera. It's okay. They do look better than the selfie camera. The selfie camera is like probably the worst on here. Like out of all the cameras, the selfie camera is not that good. Also be aware, you will get oils on here all the time and it will like smudge it up and then sometimes your pictures will look extra potato-y. So make sure you clean that off before you take pictures. But yeah, the, the exterior camera, the viewfinder, that's neat. You get like a little notification scroller. If you get a text message or a notification, you can see that. It's fine. Usually it turns off before you can even read the actual meat and potatoes of it anyway. But I love the form factor. I love this whole compact thing. You get to like fold it in half. And of course you can open it up. You can answer phone calls. You can close it. You can hang up that way. It's really nice. You get that old nice, the, the nice nostalgic feeling if you used to use flip phones all the time. And yeah, largely, I mean, I, I do like it. 256 gigs of storage, I think it's perfectly adequate. There's no SD card storage, you can't upgrade it. It's not 64, it's not 128. I think 256 is pretty fair. And then you also have eight gigs of RAM. I think that's good. I think it's very complimentary. Power and performance wise, this is a very, very good phone. It's basically the same as the Note 20 Ultra, except in a compact form factor, 6.7 inch screen, HDR plus 10 plus content, HDR 10 content, and it's a pretty nice AMOLED display. It's not like bad quality. It's very, very good quality. Samsung makes really nice, beautiful, vibrant, high contrast displays. You can see it well out in the sun if you turn the brightness up. And as far as using it, it has their ultra thin glass on here. And I believe it's ultra thin, yeah. I believe it's ultra thin glass version two. It's supposedly, it's basically like, it still feels like plastic. Like it doesn't feel like a glass screen because it's super, super thin. And they found a way to make this where they like cut it like super, super thin so it, it's pliable like plastic. It basically feels like plastic. And so be careful with it. It does have the screen protector on here whenever it whenever you take it out of the box, if you buy one brand new, you can take it off. They recommend having a Samsung like experienced professional do it for you and then replacing another one. You don't wanna mess up the screen. I've not had any problems with mine. I took mine off personally after about like six months because this thing gets super, super dingy. I mean, you can see it just collects oils and resins and dirt and everything. It's, it feels disgusting after a couple of months. So I clean it all the time. After about six months, like I had it. It was really degrading the experience. Now, as far as the performance, data usage, one UI is the best that Samsung's ever done. It's got one UI 3.1. They are always continuing to upgrade it. You get like monthly security updates. It's supported for like, what, three years now? I think might even be four. I think it's three years of operating system updates and four years of security patches now. I don't think we're quite to five yet. Don't quote me on that. But I don't really have any concerns about it. The biggest concern I had when it first came out was, of course, durability. Largely, I think it held up well. In the first year, of course, if you bought it, you got the one screen replacement for $150 if you needed that done. And if you don't, it's like, if you don't use the insurance, it's like almost $900 to get this screen replaced. So definitely any foldable, I recommend getting insurance. It's cool because the new Z Flip 3, if you do the reserve and the pre-order, I got a link down in the description there. You can do that. They give you a year of insurance when you get the new Z Flip 3, which I think really, really is nice. But this one, if you buy one brand new before December 31st of this year, you get a one year warranty on the screen where if something happens with it, where you damage it, not a manufacturer defect, they'll replace it for $150, the screen that is. That's a good deal. Um, I don't know, I think that's about it. I've talked about sound, battery, camera, durability, user experience. Uh, oh, also you get flex mode. So if you like, you can do this. I mean, you can put it in all sorts of different positions. One favorite thing I like is like putting it down on my nightstand and watching it when I'm going to sleep at night. It's like having my own personal mini TV. And then, just for illustration purposes, let me pull up YouTube just so you can see. So flex mode, what it does is it splits the screen evenly and it's not, it puts the entire video up top so that way whenever you're watching stuff, it's not like cut halfway in the middle, puts the comments on the section, on the bottom and then you got the video up top. It works out pretty well. And here, we'll just pop in on this real quick. So you can see right there, you got the comments on the bottom, you got the video on top. 
Only certain apps support this. It's not for everything. I really, really, really would have liked to have seen better implementation of this. It never really got better from the day that it came out. So not a whole lot actually supports it. If it does, it's actually nice. We never got DEX on here. No DEX, no wireless DEX. I think that that's purely because of a battery perspective because they put it on the Tab S6 Lite, which is severely underpowered compared to this. They put it on the Tab S6. If all that other stuff has inferior hardware and has DEX, then why wouldn't they put it on here? This, I don't believe they envision you using as a desktop replacement, as a multitasking tool. It doesn't have the battery to support all that. It doesn't even have a second speaker for Pete's sake. So a lot of people are irritated about it. I can imagine it would last about two hours. <laughs> like I, I don't see it lasting very long. If they did put it on there, I mean, I guess, yeah, it's your option. Like, go for it. I'm hoping they put it on the Z Flip 3. I, don't get me started on that. I, I don't want to get into that too much yet. They're saying from everything I've seen, it's going to have the same 3300 milliamp battery with a more powerful processor and a faster refresh rate on the screen, which tells me I'm going to get two hours and 15 minutes of screen on time. Like, I've got serious concerns about the Z Flip 3 coming up, especially when it comes to battery life. But overall, I love this phone. It's been so nice. I love having this nice, small, compact form factor. It's great. I carry a lot of stuff in my pockets all the time. Let me put my case back on here. It's very easy to put the case on these, by the way. You just pop it on there, kind of locks into place. You're good to go. And it protects it very well. So I guess that's it, guys. Uh, one year later, I think it's a solid phone. It, if you're worried about it, get the insurance. I think it's held up well enough. I don't think that the problem with mine, I don't think it was a durability issue. I think that it was just some sort of weird manufacturer defect. And yeah, that's okay. Things happen, especially as much as I use and abuse phones. I ended up, it, the process worked and it's worked well with my Z Fold 2. It had like a line that went through the screen after about nine months. I got it replaced in like three days. The Premier Concierge service is very, very good. These people are helpful and you can access it seven days a week, 365 you're covered and they will send you like a next day shipping label to your email as soon like while you're on the phone with them. They're very good. So I don't really have a lot of concerns. The price, it is very expensive. It's only dropped MSRP from $14.49 to $12.99 over the course of a year. But Samsung has a like ridiculous trade-in deals even now. You can get one Amazon renewed for like 700 bucks. You can find them used all over the place for like $600 now. So the market, on the resale side is much better than still buying it from Samsung. But of course you get the best with the warranty and the insurance and the stuff from Samsung. But if you're going to pay that much money, just get the Z Flip 3. They're saying it's going to have a larger screen on the outside. Hopefully something similar to this guy right here, the Motorola Razr 5G. And this right here, I assure you, is much better than this tiny screen right here. And that's one of the reasons I love the Razr 5G so much. Now, that's all I got. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down in the comments section. I'll get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, and I hope you did, Please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you guys next time.